Hi everyone, I'm Kim Kuhn and this is Rearview Mirror. Oh my God. Oh my God, what is happening? Did Thanos win? Hey Kim, I found this sweet glove over in the control room. Kim, where? Oh, Kim's not here. So I guess that means it's on me to do. All right, so hello everyone. I'm Chuck Bush, this is Rearview Mirror and you can leave all of your YouTube comments for how much I suck at this below. Promise, no one's more disappointed in my life choices than my mom. Sorry, Lucy. But you know what wasn't disappointing? That was all the NASCAR racing action at Charlotte Motor Speedway. The grills weren't the only things heating up at the track this Memorial Day weekend. High temperatures meant the track was hot and slick, but the racing was even hotter. Austin Dillon got into the wall in the NASCAR Xfinity Series race, and the impact knocked out the crush panel, which let even more heat into the car. Almost turned Dillon's ribs into some burnt ends. Now see, this is why you don't let just anyone work the grill. Too soon? Fire erupted on Christopher Bell's machine after a blown tire ended his day early. With all that extra time in the day, hopefully he took the golden opportunity to throw a little shrimp on the barbie. Unfortunately, all the Gibbs cars suffered right front damage, which seemed to be a theme throughout the weekend. In the end, Tyler Reddick stopped, dropped, and rolled through the finish line ahead of runner-up Justin Allgaier for his second win of the season. During the Xfinity race, some of your favorite Cup Series drivers took over the race broadcast, and let's just say, well, let's go down to Pit Road and Bubba Wallace. Bubba? Down there on Pit Road about, <laughs> about the four car, guys. I don't know who the four is, but I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, don't worry about it. The, the, the four is Ross Bubba, Chastain, the four is Bubba. your guy. It is your guy, Bubba. Oh, whoops. Ah, he pulled tape off. He was running hot. There you go. <laughs> Dynamite drop in, buddy. Man, that is some... Nailed it. I mean. Also, this is what happens when you put Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, and Clint Boyer in a broadcast booth. Right so here. I dumped this water bottle down me to try to cool off. And why you don't do that is that water will boil underneath your butt. Mm. And you look like you have fried eggs on both cheeks <laughs> of your butt. <laughs> that was a horrible experience. And this, uh. is, this is Justin Haley at the end of the race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that the left cheek or the right cheek? Yeah. <laughs> Sunday's Coca-Cola 600 was a wild nightcap to the greatest day in motorsports. While the temperatures may have been a little bit lower after the sun went down, the cautions were high. That Jones boy, remember the Gibbs theme we talked about, blew his right front ending his day early, while teammates Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin also experienced some right front issues. Brad Keselowski proved Team Penske would be a force to be reckoned with as he swept the first two stages, but sadly it wasn't enough to clinch the win. Remember, this is the longest race of the year. After a not so great restart on stage three, Keselowski was pushed back to around 15th and it was all downhill from there. BK spun out in turn four, luckily dodging any major contact, he would end up finishing the day 19th. The Bush brothers made contact, Larson and Boyer got roughed up and Denny Hamlin found trouble again, this time on the final lap. But what about our winner you say? The Jersey boy, Martin Truex Jr. used the fact that we had a fourth stage to his advantage snuck back to the front, grabbed a stage win, and after five solid hours of racing, the track cooled down just enough for MTJ to close in from third to first in a thrilling four wide pass to earn him the bragging rights of being a two time Coca-Cola 600 winner. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of Rearview Mirror. Be sure to check back next week as we head up to the Poconos and maybe Kim will be back by then, maybe. <laughs>